and that's probably a good um, a good way to transition to talk about pre qualifications, pre approvals, things like that. Because I think a lot of the times, real estate agents may not have everything set up for if someone's going to offer a a contract where maybe they're going to get you know put ten percent down on a mortgage and they haven't already gone through a pre approval process. That's where maybe some of the risk comes into play because it's hey, will they actually qualify? Are they stretching? So, Mark, Correct. if you could kind of go into um, explain you know because we hear words like pre-qualification, mm-hmm. pre-approval, and what those mean, and what are the documents that people should be looking for to really look at a potential buyer and say, hey, this person is well qualified to make this offer and purchase this property. So first of all, let me say pre-qualification and pre-approval varies by institution, mm-hmm. okay? It's what their requirements are to issue a pre-approval certificate or a pre-qualification certificate. In my opinion, they're generally not worth the paper they're printed on. Um, a gentleman named Jim Weikert in New Jersey who owns a huge real estate company, brilliant guy, as a marketing ploy in the 90s, came up with the idea that he, he was going to underwrite his buyers before they went into market so that they would be more qualified than anybody else shopping for a home. And it's since become an industry standard, believe it or not. And uh, uh, basically, the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification is that with a pre-approval, usually the loan is underwritten. In other words, an underwriter is seeing pay stubs, bank statements, um, uh, a credit report, things like that to make a determination about whether the borrower qualifies for the loan or not. That, that being said, the investigation is not as detailed or as deep as when they're actually applying for a loan and buying a house, which is why sometimes things turn up after a pre-approval is issued that may not have, uh, uh, you know, turned up before. Because, you know, are they going to go through the trouble of ordering written verifications of employment and things like that? Probably not. Uh, a pre-qual is basically a loan officer looking at some pay stubs and some bank statements and a credit report and deciding, yeah, this guy can get a loan. Okay. So a lot of it really is, do you have a trusted source? Do you have a qualified loan officer? That's really what makes or breaks a pre-approval. Okay. And, and a lot of times in our business, uh, people will say, well, longevity points towards, uh, the, being qualified to to make this analysis, it doesn't. I've seen guys in the business for 20 years who still can't take a good mortgage application. <laughs> credibility, longevity does not mean credibility, okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So many people say, I've been in this industry for so many years, so I know what I'm doing. That doesn't mean anything, right. whether you're in mortgage lending or you are a real estate agent, for right. that matter. So if right. you're just new in the industry, we should say for anybody who's thinking about becoming a, a mortgage officer or a real estate agent, don't think that because you're new that you won't have the same skill set or be able to provide the same level of expertise as somebody who's been in the industry for a long time. Um, right. Now, it's a, right. As long as you have good resources behind you, you can be good at what you're doing. Exactly. Resources like SunQuest funding, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thanks, it, Matt. I think, too, what people often think about with pre-qualifications, like, oh, well, we can just call, you know, the loan officer, you know, the night of we're doing an offer, and they can just kind of take a quick look at things. And that's really, I would say that's a huge myth that is out there in the real estate industry where people say, well, you could just talk to a loan officer. They'll get you a piece of paper that will say you're qualified to purchase this home. And in my opinion, and I'm going to guess you probably share this opinion, that's doing a big disservice to that buyer because if that piece of paper gets them through to a contract and then they find out that they're not qualified, they're in for a world of hurt. Correct. But well, it all, once again, it all depends on the, the, uh, the loan officer, how good the loan officer is. I know for me, I can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are guys who can't. So if it's somebody that you've worked with as a realtor, you've worked with a long time and, and they've always done good work. Yes. You could trust that loan officer to say, yeah, this works. But if it's somebody you've never worked with before a company you're unfamiliar with, sometimes just getting a second opinion is good. I, I do second opinions a lot. And, uh, and it, and, and it helps the uh, transaction 
uh, go forward more smoothly, just knowing that there's two people that have looked at it and 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 it works. Well, I think so. too, Mark, you you know what you're looking at. You know what to ask for too from a buyer. I think yes. um, the situation I'm talking about. Some people will call a loan officer at you know Joe's Bank, for example, Hopefully or one of the big 800 there. numbers, one of yeah. the big 800 number places. And all they do is have a conversation. And the buyer yes. says, this is what I earn. These are yes. my debts. And then they give them a piece of paper without actually looking at what, because you would never issue, I would guess, a prequal or a pre-approval without actually seeing evidence of income and you know things like that. It, it varies. Sometimes I will admit that I do. But it, it, you know, as somebody with my level of experience, I get red flags from conversations right away. Mm-hmm. And when I hear something, I'm like, uh oh, no, we have to run that credit or I need to see a pay stub because I know the questions to ask that bring up those red flags. You know, we're talking about overtime. We're talking about base income versus bonus. Mm-hmm. We're talking about commission, inconsistent income. And those are all areas that you have to listen for to know that uh, we need more further documentation on this transaction. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a school teacher that's been teaching for seven years in the same school district and they say, this is my income, it's their income. Yeah. It is what it is. That's a great so, point. Right. Well, that's a great point. And I think that's, um, 